The fight over illegal immigration and a town's right to enforce immigration law is not over. Hazelton Mayor Lou Barletta vows to keep fighting the ruling against his town. But the lead attorney in the case says the decision sends a clear message not only to Hazelton, but to other communities seeking to curtail the impact of illegal immigration. The American Civil Liberties Union, one of the groups suing the city of Hazleton and winning a legal victory. The legal director of the Pennsylvania ACLU is Vic Palchak. He joins us from Pittsburgh. Good to have you with us. Good to be here. Thank you, Lou. We'll begin with a congratulations. And uh, at this point, what do you think the impact of this decision will be? Well, we hope that this decision sends a blaring red light to any local elected officials around the country who may be thinking of passing a similar law. Um, you know, I found it curious that both um, Mayor Barletta and his lawyer were so soundly attacking not just Judge Munley's opinion, but also Judge Munley himself and suggesting there was politics involved. You know, this is the first court to rule on one of these ordinances after having had a full trial. We had a two-week trial right. back in nationwide, March. Na nationwide, we should point out. Right, nationwide. But there have been six or seven other decisions by judges around the country on a preliminary basis. Yeah. Um, and they, every single one of them has right. ruled the same and has rejected right. the arguments that, you know, the mayor thinks Well, in fairness, so not each of those ordinances is the same. Uh, there, there, there are now some, some, uh, some very similar to that in, uh, as Hazleton's. Uh, but you say not political. Uh, mayor Barletta saying that this judge managed in a 207-page opinion uh, to include uh, concerns about whether the government of Mexico would get mad uh, and would have an influence on U.S. foreign policy. Uh, I, I mean, uh, help me out there. Why would he do that? Well, for, you know, with again, with all due what respect to, to Mayor Barletta, that is testimony that was in the record. And in fact, it came in to show that immigration requires a careful calibration between lots of interests, including foreign policy, the national economy, individual rights. And well, those Vic, are if considerations. I may say, if I may say, balderdash, Im U.S. immigration law, the U.S. Constitution should not be swamped by that sort of uh, absolute balderdash. I mean, that's absurd. Uh, 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 Are no, you I'm saying that there has to be reciprocity and mutuality no, in immigration law before it can be enforced? You know better than that. No, I, I'm sorry, Lou. I, I mean, you asked me to come on the show. You sure. asked me a question. I thought you wanted to hear the answer. Well, so, I, I want to hear the, the answer. I just want to hear you make some sense on the thing. Well, if you'd let me finish okay, and not no, please, distort what please, I'm saying, right. Please. Uh, and, I, and I'm sorry. You know, no, I know no, I'm, please, a guest, I'm, I'm a guest hey. on your show. Look, the, the, Go point, for it, is, the point is is the reason that the, it is so important for the federal government to be making decisions about immigration is that it affects a lot of national interests like foreign policy, like how are you going to affect the national economy? How are you going to deal with individual rights? And Congress has to calibrate those things. And in fact, it is those considerations that have prevented Congress from coming up with any kind of legislation. The point the judge is making, which is reflecting wait, 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 wait. You're not, you're, you're, you're putting forward a political opinion. I'm asking you for a, a few uh, legal, uh, well, the legal, legal analysis. Opinion. So let's go back to your political point. The ACLU would recommend to those communities, and I know that the ACLU is every bit as concerned about the impact of illegal immigration, just as concerned as any American in this country about the fact our borders are not secure, that a million illegal aliens, as many as a million illegal aliens, are entering this country illegally. What would be the ACLU's advice and counsel legal advice and counsel to mayors and city councils and small towns all over the country who, as you say, might be contemplating uh, an ordinance like this, what would you have them do? What's your best counsel to them to deal with the impact uh, of a government that will not enforce existing U.S. immigration laws, uh, the impact of a government and an administration that will not secure the borders, even though we're in a global war on terror? Right. For, first of all, Lou, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a trial lawyer. I'm a constitutional lawyer. I'm probably not the kind of immigration expert that you are. Um, and, I, yeah. and I'm not going to talk about the, a position on the borders. The ACLU has not taken a position on that. In terms of what You could have fooled me. <laughs> well, no, I, I mean, I, I think that's that's accurate that we have not taken a position on, I on, on what to do with the borders. You know, my job in this case was to look at this local ordinance sure. and, and try to help the judge determine whether or not it's constitutional or not. Right. We think it's very difficult for municipalities. Well, let me ask you this then, if you, if you want to def <laughs> defer on that. What counsel well, would you give to Americans? To <laughs> I'm sorry? I thought I was trying to answer that. I, I, well, I, I thought you had. I, if you hadn't, please go ahead. 
Um, what what um, local municipalities need to do is first put pressure on their congressional representatives to try to come up with some kind of solution. And I know that's partly a dodge. The second point that's really important is that I think that if we're going to have a discussion about immigration in this country, yeah. it's very important that we right. deal with facts and not myths oh, and propaganda. Partner, I couldn't agree with you more. So let's turn the question just a little differently since okay. you... Uh, I have only partially dodged the, the, uh, the question, and this I know you won't want to dodge. Is there any legal recourse to the American people, U.S. citizens, uh, against a government, an administration, executive departments, particularly Homeland Security, the Justice Department, when they refuse to enforce existing U.S. law, uh, when uh, they refor uh, refuse to enforce the border? Uh, on this very day, we're watching the National Guard be withdrawn by half uh, from our borders, even though illegal immigration I is uh, unabated. Right. I mean, ultimately, Lou, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know whether there is a legal cause of action. Uh, the bottom line is that accountability for the president, for members mm -hmm. of Congress, lies at the ballot box. And, well, that's certainly know, one of them, but we, right. we don't want to keep you lawyers out of work. Uh, we wouldn't want that to, you to oh, be I, idle. I wouldn't worry about too this? much about, about the, that. <laughs> how about this? You're a, you're a volunteer organization. You're worried about the, the American Civil Liberties Union. Are, right. are our civil liberties being violated by a government that will not enforce border security, that will not enforce existing law, that will not protect local communities and their citizens from the impact of those who have violated the law uh, and from uh, the, the very need to right. do so? Because it is fundamentally a failure, a dereliction of duty on the part of the federal government. Well, I think, you know, the, the problem with a legal cause of action there comes from your conservative colleagues on the Supreme Court who have My said... My conservative that, colleagues? I'm neither a conservative nor, nor well, they a, are, a justice. Well, there are the conservative folks in this country have um, helped the Supreme Court and other courts rule that the government is not a guarantor of people's safety. So, um, you know, I I'm think, sorry, say frankly, that again. Run that the one government, right. The government cannot be held accountable as a guarantor of yeah. people's safety. Yeah, well, so, you know, I don't think I don't think plan, there are many people in this country looking for a guarantee on either the issue right. of homeland security, border security, or illegal immigration. But you know what they would like if they can't get a guarantee or a warranty, they sure would like a best effort. Do you think we're getting that? Uh, you know, it 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 does not appear that the federal government is. Um, I mean, I, you know, I think it's a difficult political situation, Lou. Yeah. And, and what's ironic yeah. well, is there that some nothing, of the... Look, can we agree on this as we end? There should yeah. be nothing political about a president and a de uh, department head's responsibility to enforce the law. There should be nothing political about a Congress and a president preserving the safety and the security of the American people and enforcing immigration laws. Uh, Can we amen, agree on that? Amen, Lou. How's amen, that? brother. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Good. Thank Good you. Good to have you with us. Thank you.